Hi, Will. Hey. I just wanted to talk to some real ones, like just real regular regular bitches. You know what I mean? She's a real housewife of Chicago. No, I am not. <laughs> Come through, bring the check. It's easy. This is, this feels right. Hey, y'all, I'm doing some new shit. I've been able to interview like some of the dopest black women on the planet. Well, now that I'm like kind of freelance and just out here in the world, I just wanted to talk to some real ones, like just real regular, regular bitches. Me and Lequana actually. Kimba. Yes, me and Lequana went to high school together. She's a, um, a Instagram baddie now. Um, so are you kinda, denying it? Sort of, kind of, not really. They like to call it Instagram model, but I don't model nothing. So can I say I'm a But model? would you? Would I model? I mean, I've had flat tummy tea offers, but who really made money off flat tummy tea? They wasn't paying a lot? No. God, y'all so robust. God, y'all so robust. Bartender. Everybody Damn, knows that. I'm a bartender. bartender. <laughs> I'm your promoter's favorite bartender. I'm your bartender's favorite bartender. I'm the bartender. So, but let's talk on that though, because bartending is becoming kind of its own lane. Like bartending um, is weird. Yeah, though. like I took my boot to a strip club for their birthday, and the bartenders was back there looking like the strippers. Bartenders I mean, bad as hell. fine, yeah. like bad. Yeah. And, bartenders are easily clear in the Yeah, easily. Yes. So I'm telling y'all might want to take y'all a little mixology. So how'd you start bartending? I started bartending because I felt like I could always make money based on how I look, but I didn't have the courage to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. Like I'm too body shy. I couldn't <laughs> do. I, I will. I will. Oh, I would want to be a stripper so bad, but I couldn't do it. Like. I'm too body shy, like I don't want people touching me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I could just find a way to make some money off of how I look, I know I do good. Mm -hmm. And bartender was the next thing. Do you feel like people, um, because obviously like you fine as fuck and you work in nightlife, mm -hmm. do you feel like you often have to like do a lot of explaining about, you know, what you do or people making assumptions about you? The thing is, like, everybody, when they see how much money you make bartending or when you close them, they're like, ah! Pretzels. <laughs> Man, like, you make all that bartending. Like, I should be a bartender. Everybody feel like, they be like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. Like, everybody think they, they think could, it's easy. Everybody think they could take what you're doing because you make it look so easy and do it and make the same type of money. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. Like, people never realize how much customer service going to bartending like i'm your therapist if you having to mess up they're like whether you tip me or not i still supposed to give you the great service like what if you having an off day this week you don't got no money you down bad you just yep. need a drink then next week when you come in you know so people don't really realize all the other elements that go into bartending mm -hmm. they just think you're pouring a drink it's right. so much more to it than that mm -hmm. period but with dating you definitely see some problems with that. The nightlife causes problems with dating. Like, everything is fine and dandy until your ass not home at 3 a.m. After 3 a.m., it's the sense that niggas that just go off at 3 a.m. <laughs> 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 I'm just like, where is you at? Like, I don't care. Like, the bar closed. What you doing? Like, it don't, 3 a.m. is different. But wait, here's my question now. Are these people who you meet while you're working? No. Because I'm like, how you gonna meet me at the bar? You know, and, and then be mad that I'm oh that way. Oh my god! Like, the one thing I hate is I meet men at the bar and then they like, when can I come see you? And I'm like, well, you know, I work this day, I work that day. Like, I want to see you outside the bar. Like, I'm always at the bar. You yeah, met me I, at the bar. I work. Come see me here. That's always the problem. So. And tip. Definitely. <laughs> and it's like saying, I was like, well, how can I get somebody like your attention? You know, you don't ever tip see well. Me. That's how I you get in my like, come to my job. Leave a nice tip. I guarantee you I'll remember you. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It, because it's literally her job to remember you. It's you come, that simple. It, it's customer retention. It's, it's her job to remember people who come and tip well. It's that simple. It's like, how can I meet you? I want to come to the record room. Friday, Saturday. Meet me. A come time. through. Bring the check. It's easy. Megan Thee Stallion. I'd rather be a B-I-T-C-H because that's what they're going to call me anyway. <laughs> Period. Real hot girl shit. Ah. 
Like, you might as well be a woman out here doing what you want to do because people going to have something to say about your ass anyway. So make your own lane and body that shit. Honestly, I always be telling girls that's, like, younger than me who, like, ask for advice and stuff. Like, look, I don't know nobody who gets older and say, you know... I really regret being a hoe when I was younger. Nobody no. ever says that. The problem is people wait till they 30 and want to be hoe hoes. Now you get that shit out your system in your 20s like you're supposed to. And nobody has a problem with it. Or don't. What somebody else got to say about you literally just means nothing. Live your best life. I went to go visit my cousins in like the project. It's the Calumet building. It needs to be on 63rd. I used to live in way. It's the Cali Weber girl, 63. I went to go visit my cousins and I got into a fight with one of the project kids. I don't know her name, but I know I did not want to fight her. And my brother was like, no, you don't fight her. My brother made me fight her. I cannot fight her. I was doing like the pinwheel. He was like, what was that? I was like, one of them put you to some land. No, I did not get my SV, but I just didn't have no technique yet. (laughs) (laughs) Had to get that shit down. So that's actually funny you mentioned that. The chapter that I'm writing in my book right now. Is technique fighting technique? is it's not necessary. I mean, kinda. The, I, I start the chapter though writing about my the first time I got into a fight. I didn't have no technique either. Mm-hmm. So you I was gotta like, go in for the key yeah. Home. Probably my phone bill. How did you pay it? I had a job at McDonald's, bitch, when I was sixteen years old. I do remember. I you used always to work at McDonald's. I, I always did about my McDonald's. money. You know, when we went to school, bitches said Louis Vuitton yeah, bags, they was, yeah. uh, fucking. All kind of designer shit. Louis Vuitton, mm-hmm. Dooney and Burke, yeah. Bur- Columbia Code. So, yeah. my little ass, my mama didn't pay for none of that shit. For my real. mama provided the necessities. Yep. Like, I'm going to make sure you have some new shoes. They're not going to be Jordans. I'm going to make sure yeah. you have a coat. It's All not going to be works. name brand. I'm shit, I was about my knockoff bag. Yep. I was about my Jordans, my Jabot. <laughs> it has to be up in you. Like, if it's yeah. in me that young, like, no. I need to, no. Yeah. It has to be in you. It's some, mm-hmm. It's a drive. Like, either you have it or you don't have it. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't. Like, it's in you that young. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people, and for a lot of different reasons, whether it's you don't like being managed, you you don't like having to listen to people, you want to take the easy oh, way out. Yeah. I mean, but exact, but you still I took your ass it. to work though, didn't you? I hate and you still went office. and still got your check. I hate it smell like fries. <laughs> I hated the managers talking to me like that was my mom. I hated everything about McDonald's. I hated that funky ass hair net. I hated McDonald's. Yeah. I hated the soul of McDonald's. I- she not in there. My granny. My great granny. My great granny is the truth. My great granny is the shit. She like a real one. Mm-hmm. For real. She makes sure everybody's straight. Mm-hmm. You know, just that good old, like, you good, you need anything. Mm-hmm. People don't have people like that no more. Like my grandma would literally, she's the only person I know in this world. Mm-hmm. Right now, they'll still call you, like, hey, you good, you need anything, you know. You need some Aww. money or something. Like, who you know calling yeah. you like that? And she really mean it. I'm fairly confident. It's easy for Laquan to be confident because Laquan got a fat ass, y'all. Like that don't mean. <laughs> yes, it <do. laughs> That's the reason for me not to be confident because people always looking at me, always talking to me. First of all, every, the attention that this thing gets you is <laughs> this, this thing ridiculous. And also for oh, anybody on the internet. Who be trying to flex on her? She always had that ass. Hey, hey, she had a fat ass, you know. What I mean? Ever since high school. Thank you. She has had it since high school. For the people in the back, <laughs> like just been following me around. <laughs> been two people. Thank you. We both went on prom, right? Thank you. Thank you. I think the number one rule to confidence is you can't worry about what other people think. I think people always feel like confidence comes from how other people view you. Like, oh, do you think this is cute? Mm-hmm. Do you like my hair? Do you think I look cute in this outfit? Like, to be confident first, you got to feel that shit yourself. Like, right. it comes from within. Like, you can be so confident that other people see that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that's where true confidence comes from in yourself. Like, you got to put that shit on. Like, oh, I look good in this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you go outside, people going to feel like you yeah. look good in that shit because you feel like you it's look good energy. in that shit. Period. It's energy. So, yeah. I think that's what it is. Like, whatever you do, just body that shit. I do have mm-hmm. a catering company, so I have like a small catering company. And I'm trying to just go hard with that. In 2020, I just want to put all my energy and extra time into that. You know, it's something I've been doing on the side for a couple years, and I just want to make it the one How thing. How long you been cooking? I've been cooking for like four years now. Really? Yes. Like, I've had And this is something you always clients. wanted to do? It's not really, see, the thing, I never grew up wanting to be a chef, but I've always had a passion for cooking. Like, I've been watching the cooking channel since I was like 
four or five. Mm-hmm. Like my mama said, like I would turn from Sesame Street and watch Mr. Food on Channel Eleven, girl. <laughs> like I've been watching that is so like, cute. Julia Childs, everything. Like my mom always said, like I don't, I can't believe you're not a chef. Like my mom used to always say that, like I mm-hmm. cannot believe you're not a chef. Like you mm-hmm. love cooking. Like you've been watching this shit your whole mm-hmm. life. How are you not a chef? So it's just something that's finally coming to kind of full circle for me. Mm-hmm. Like it's the one thing that I feel like I'm not working when I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Like I really love cooking. I felt that. Well, now I'm hungry. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. This is, this feels right. You're not gonna look like no weird. I would say. You know how like, you know when you find your high school friends on the internet when you ain't talking to them. Like, it could oh, go one or two ways. It could be like, oh, now they sending me chain letters, yeah. or I saw Laquan on the search page. Laquan was page. on my explore page, and I was like, who is notice? I was like, wait a minute, this girl looks familiar. All the pretty girls went to Kenwood. That's I a just, fact. That's... They still say that. That is a fact. I ran into people when I tell them I went to Kenwood, and they're like, damn, all the heavy went to Kenwood. Like. It's not that a lie. A fact. It's not. It's fact. Actual is factual. Chicago girls do it better. And then if you want to get specific, it's the Kenwood girls. That's yeah. just that on that. That's if you went to Hyde Park, if you went to Whitney Young, just be quiet. Turn this off. <laughs> Go. This is not your show. <laughs> yes, but I mean, Fashion Nova stuff already only costs eight dollars. Like it's really not worth it. Like I forgot about that. <laughs> Black people. <laughs> I forgot. Who is? We are not. <laughs> We're not doing that part. No camera for that. <laughs> they all the same. So. And I still go on Rainbow and I dare one of y'all to say something to me about it because honestly, it'd be the same shit in there. I don't go on Rainbow no more, but I'm not judging this. She ain't gonna fight me. I, I, Bitch, add me to your close friends. <laughs> That's all right.